all healing is healing of the mind, and all therapy is psychotherapy, because only the mind can be sick. And what happens a lot of time in our sessions is we'll start talking about ideas, but if any of you have issues that are going on in your life, you know, that you're struggling with, or there's a repetitive pr pattern that's been coming up, this problem seems to be resurfacing over the years, and you kind of begin getting stuck on, then feel free to bring that up, and we'll use that as a practical example to trace it back through some of the metaphysics of the course. Because ultimately, it, it has to be a practical course. It just doesn't do a lot of good. We don't need another religion as far as memorizing more terms, you know, memorizing another system and, and making a religion out of it. We want to have a living experience of that peace and truth. And really the only way to do that is to be able to offer every thought that you have in your mind, every concept, every perception that you have over to the Holy Spirit and to let it be washed clean. So I want to just kind of open up with that and just say that as we go along, if there's any question that you have or if there's any kind of issue that you're going on that's really related to that, feel free to bring that up and we'll, we'll use that. Um, and basically the, the dialogue format too is, you know, the truth is, is within each of us and so I don't like to get into a monologue of talking about, talking about, you know. If I'm talking about something and, and you don't see how it's very practical or applicable, you know, ask me how it's applicable in my life, you know. You can't have, you can't come up here and talk and talk and talk about ideas if your life doesn't demonstrate those things. You know, if you haven't had to go through those struggles and issues and, and it's not a living example, then, then what is it? And I want this to be all of our nights. You know, there are controversies, sometimes there are, are seeming conflicts between levels. There are, are things that Jesus will seemingly say one thing and then a few pages later say something else and there'll be a, it'll be kind of like, wait a minute. You know, isn't there a conflict here? We, we want to, I want to just throw it out if there's anything in particular tonight. You know, whether it's healing or relationships or, you know, economics, finances or, you know, anything on your mind that, that you have that is, is a burning issue. In the course it says that perhaps they need correction, you need correction at another level. Level is a good one because uh, I get so confused about it. Uh, could you, I've listened to Watnick on it and I understand it and I know that 99% of the time we're in ego because the only thing it has to learn anything is the ego. Um, but the level, that's difficult because the Course does shift from uh, the higher level, the higher self, to it's, uh, you're the Holy Son of God and says, and brother, you're shaking in your boots too because you do this. It skips. It talks to us in the ego level and then it takes talks to our Christ self. I understand that. But to apply the levels in our lives now, like I need correction at another level, what would that imply possibly? Well. You can get it from so many different angles, but if we want to come at it from levels, that's a good way to come because early in the text, Jesus says that all conflict arises from confusing the levels. Gee, that's a big statement. All conflict comes from confusing the levels. And basically, Jesus says all sickness comes from confusing the levels. So if we can get really clear about this, I mean, really go into this, just taking this particular approach tonight, there can be enormous clarity and enormous healing if we can just explore that using that example and, and going in. Basically, in the beginning of the text, Jesus defines sickness as not right-mindedness. You know, whenever you're not in your right mind, so to speak, there's a right mind and a wrong mind. Whenever you're not in your right mind, you're sick. And whenever you're not in your right mind, you're confusing the levels. So, first of all, I'll just talk about um, what I see as three real distinct levels in the Course. Um, the one we won't spend a whole lot of time on because the Course doesn't spend a lot of time on it. That's the level of complete union, complete abstract knowledge, God, Christ, um, the Kingdom of Heaven. It's called knowledge. It's called the, the eternity, the eternal, the infinite. Um, the Course talks about these terms and comes and talks about it as, as what is. You know, how it says, we say God is in the workbook and we cease to speak. You know, that's just what is. And so, 
The Course doesn't spend a lot of time even talking about that level because it says this is a Course in miracles. This is a Course in changing our perception so that we can prepare our minds to, for God to take the final step and for us to return to the Kingdom of Heaven. So I, would, I wouldn't even call that a level. I call that level less. <laughs> okay? Just level less. <laughs> There's no levels involved in Heaven. Okay? Then, as soon as we come from that, we come into what the Course calls the split mind. And right away we're into the metaphor. We're into a metaphor because it's describing something as if the separation occurred. Okay? Jesus says at many points, you know, that the separation has not occurred. That, that, and there's one point in the, in the 500s, in the Beyond the Idol sections, where it says, God knows not form. You know, a little bitty sentence, but some pretty power, a pretty powerful idea. God knows not form. Hmm. You know, that he, this whole seeming split and this projected world, and for that matter, this cosmos, the black holes, the, the stars, you know, the, just the, the, the galaxies and everything is all part of the projection. In other words, it all involves spheres and gravity and form and all kinds of different shapes and so on and so forth. But basically, that we're, once we speak even of the cosmos, we're down into the level of the split mind. And basically, there is only one mind. But if you, I saw the clarification of terms being up until a little bit before. If you go back to the clarification of terms, Jesus says, that um, the, that there is the concept of an individual mind is is just made up. In other words, it's it seems to be meaningful when we talk about the split. So it seems as if there are individual minds. Okay, and basically with that concept, then he says there seems to be a a right mind and a wrong mind, a part of the mind that remembers spirit, where the Holy Spirit abides and the other part of the ego abides. Okay? Now, when I say it seems to be individual minds, basically what happens is that in perception, when the mind perceives separate fragments, everything seems to be fragmented, including separate bodies, the, the properties of the body get assigned to the mind. Okay? So the mind is singular. The mind is whole. But, since the, the eyes perceive separate fragments and separate bodies, then it seems as if the way the mind does it, that everybody has a separate mind. And that pretty much, for a large part of the Course, is the level that the Course is written on. In other words, it'll talk about your brother's mind, or um, back in the back where he talks about um, how is healing accomplished, you know, and what is the function of God's teachers. He says, you know, can the teacher of God heal the patient's mind? You know, certainly not. <laughs> but, but you hear how it's described, as if there's a really another person there, and, and it's a patient, okay? And he's, he's split it up right away, speaking at the metaphorical level, as if there's a healer, kind of like an, a Christian science practitioner kind of an idea, you know, and a patient, someone who, who's being visited or somebody who's being, who's being seen. Also, we're still in that split level when he speaks about, in the teacher's manual, um, um, teachers of God and pupils. You know, the pupils will be looking for the teacher of God and everything. So basically, the majority of the Course is written at the level of assuming the mind believes that there are separate fragmented minds. When you really look at some of the lines that he gives throughout the book, though, he says all minds are joined, you know, minds are joined, bodies are not. So he keeps, like, giving these little pointers saying, you know, I'm going to work with you where you believe you are, because you believe that you're separate little fragments. But in reality, there's just one mind, you know, and the unified son of sonship is, is Christ. Another way that he kind of points at this higher level is, you know, in the teacher's manual, he, he asked the question, how many teachers of God does it take to save the world? And of course, the answer is one, you know, and that kind of points again that, that it comes down to, gee, it's always my lesson. As tempted as I am to start talking about my friends and what their lessons are in this and what their ego should do and, well, my husband's ego did this and then my ego, you know, as much as we're tempted to, to get into that, the Course keeps bringing it back and real simply just saying, it's always your own lesson. I mean, that's, over the years, that's, when I have heard the little voice in my mind, that's about what it's, 
had said to me over and over, David, it's your lesson. <laughs> As I've tried to leap out and analyze and figure it out, it's been a little voice that keeps saying, how do you feel right now? You know, how are, which, who are you connected with? And so it's like as soon as we start to get that, that, that it's always our lesson, then that seems to really accelerate the process because we, we quit, we don't fall for the ego trick of, of throwing it out there. So we'll get back to the question of levels though. That basically the right mind is, is the mind that sees that the mind is causative. And the wrong mind is where everything's twisted around and backwards. Because when we're listening to our wrong mind, cause and effect have been turned around completely. So now, instead of, it's my decision that I'm upset. It's my decision that I'm upset, unhappy. It's my decision that my, I've got a throbbing headache, or my toe, or whatever. But that's what the Course does, is it brings it back to the mind and the decision, where the ego is always trying to pawn it off, always trying to find a scapegoat. You know, if the weather had been different, if I had been in a traffic jam, if my spouse had done this differently, if I had had more rest, you know, if I had a better job, if I had a better degree, you know, it's just endless, it seems like. The ego is always coming up with all these things to say that the reason we don't have peace of mind has something to do with the external projected world. So cause and effect, in that sense, are turned around. That's what the wrong mind's all about. And it's like, once you start to get just a glimmering of this, you know, then you've got an opportunity to watch, it's a 24-hour day, literally full-time job, to watch your mind, to just notice your thoughts. It's not about beating yourself up, but it's just about noticing, you know, as you're going through the day. <coughs> and you say, I'd have been a lot clearer for this presentation if I had had more sleep. <laughs> or, you know, if it wasn't so rainy and gloomy, I wouldn't have this sore knee that I've always, you know. Or, I'm just, it's just so hot and humid and sticky today. That's why I feel a little cranky, you know. You can see how all of those statements say that there's something on the screen that is the cause of my upset. Doesn't have to do with my perception or my, my own decision. So so basically when we talk about levels, the main thing to remember, in fact Jesus, I think in the, in the early part of the text, he repeats this three times, that that the mind is causative, that all correction belongs at the thought level and not at the behavioral level. Because the level of behavior is the the level of form. We're back out on the screen again. In fact, at one point, Jesus says, you may believe that you are responsible for what you do, but not for what you think. He says, the truth is, you are responsible for what you think, <coughs> because it's only at the level of thought that where the true correction can be made. Okay? So that's, that's like a major key. He, he says, let me emphasize again. <laughs> he brings it up again, and he says the same thing. And one more time. I'd like to point out once more. You know, he comes at it like three times and really repeats it, because... And this is pretty early on in the text because it, it's like a major fundamental idea that's going to keep coming back over and over throughout the whole text and throughout the whole workbook. Now, another way we could come at it too is with, in a sense of healing, that all sickness that seems to be at the symptom level, whether we're talking about cancer or AIDS or flu or sore back or, you know, you know, just go on and on and on and on at the symptom level, that that basically, once again, that's at the form level. So that it seems as if in this world that people have healings when the symptoms disappear. In other words, the mind really thinks it knows what health is, and it really thinks it knows what sickness is. It's pretty convinced. And, and what Jesus is saying is, you know, don't pay attention to the form level again. That your problem and where the real sickness is is not right-mindedness. You have a thinking problem that's going on. It's a metaphysical problem. In other words, that the thoughts need to be replaced. The attack thoughts need to be given up and so that you can get in touch with your real thoughts. And that will heal your mind. Then, at the symptom level, automatically that will flow through and be like an automatic byproduct. But, but the constant reminder from Jesus is, is don't, don't get focused on the form level. In other words, at one point he even says, you know, don't ask the Holy Spirit to heal the body, you know. Ask the Holy Spirit for the right perception of the body. That would be a, a, a proper kind of question to come at. 
So you can see where, how fundamental this is with these two levels. 